Hello and good morning everyone. Here's Shariyama from SFR with another guide about Elementalist. This time we are covering the Tempest. And like in our old part we did already, we already uploaded a Weaver guide for, as a damage dealer in World vs. World. This time we take the support part of the Weaver, staying in the melee train, being most effective in healing, area, regeneration and cleansing, and a very big part in CCing and helping with blasting. Let's get this started. We are starting with the trades like always. As Weaver, you take water. You take water with stop, drop and roll. Dodging removes burning and chilled from nearby alleys. So every time you're dodging, you're getting chilled and burning removed from nearby alleys works pretty good because you don't need the other one. Like you can take also smoothing eyes when you do the critical aura hit, but you normally don't do that, so just take the stop roll. Then you're taking Cleansing Wave, remove conditions from nearby alleys when attuning to water. 5 targets cleanse are really easy when you go into water, you will go a lot into water, so with going a lot into water, this is one of the strongest traits you can take in terms of, if you look, deal increased damage and uh, gain reduced recharge, makes no sense on this point. And then you're taking in my, uh, Cleansing Waters, since powerful aura is not that good and smoothing mist is also not that good. We are taking cleansing water, cleanse condition from allies you grant regeneration to. You give regeneration to a lot of people so you can cleanse a lot of people too. And nowadays since the guardians got nerfed and also the scrapper got nerfed in cleansing, you should go for more cleanses and normally my tempests going around 100 to 200 cleanses per fight, pretty strong. Then you're going for arcane. You're going arcane with arcane restoration. Swapping at humans restores health. So every time you swap between F1, F2, F3 and F4, you're getting health back. Then we're going for arcane resurrection and uh, geyser. Ge uh, create a geyser to heal nearby alleys. Cast geyser when you're being reviving a downed alley. Geyser now partially reviving downed allies. When you begin reviving an alley, you gain an aura based on your attunement. So every time you try to revive someone, or every time you put a geyser on a downed person, the geyser starts reviving this person. Plus, depending on which attunement you are, you will give auras to them. So a fire, a frost, a shocking, or a magnetic aura best trait so far, can save a lot of lives, so that is a trait that you guys should be looking for. Then we have the elemental surge. Arcane skill can reduce recharge, grant increase ferocity and inflict a condition based on your attunement. So you can chill people and uh, you have a recharge reduce, you can immobilize people, you can burn or blind people, but in this term as a support, the best you can do on this is immobilizing and chilling people can help you a lot with it. Then we have the Tempest. Tempest with Eye of the Storm, shout, imbue your voice with the element of air, massively increasing the speed of nearby allies. This effect is the shout linger, bringing <coughs> stun for nearby allies. Cast Eye of the Storm when disabled, disabling, including stun, daze, knockback, pull, knockdown, sink, float, launch, taunt, and fear. So you're having a super speed for your party as a shout. What is pretty good because you also can get yourself out of every stun that you are getting into so you have a really good stun break for yourself then you go for tempest's aria tempest shout have increased targets using a shout grants allies might and afflicts enemies with weakness you since you're playing with a lot of shouts as a tempest this is your go-to you're going for 10 man auras really really strong really really needed so keep that up and then we're going for Elemental Bastion. Heal allies you grant an aura to. Grant Frost aura to nearby allies when struck while below the health they hold. It's, in, the, in my opinion, the strongest one. Because you go for healing every time an, uh, one of your people that you're healing in this term is under 75%. You're giving them 4 seconds of minus 10% incoming damage. Lifesaver. A really big lifesaver. Then further, let's go through the utility skills on this point. Utility skills you're taking. Wash the pain away as a shout, since we're playing with a lot of shouts. Then we are going for Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is a shout that gives you super speed, swiftness, might and regeneration. And it has break stun for yourself. Then we have Flash Freeze. It's, a, it's also a shout that gives chill out, regeneration, frost aura, might and weakness to 10 targets. And as a third utility skill, we are going for Arcane Wave. Arcane Wave is one of the 
best skills you have and one of the funniest skills you have because you can immobilize people with it. Then we have rebound as our strongest skill, so you'd our ultimate skill. Shout and infuse your allies with arcane energy. Allies who would take lethal damage will this is active, ignore the death blow and are healed instead. If this effect expires naturally, grant an aura based on your current attunement. So when someone would be dying, you can save their life, plus when you are depending on which aura you are, you give an aura out on them. Since we are increasing the attunement of the shout, we are going up to 10 targets. Pretty strong, right? Sounds good. And your healing skill is giving also might. I forgot about that, I'm sorry. Then we are going for our equipment. Our equipment, since my, my character sadly at the moment is on power and I don't have a minstrel gear, I will show it here. Minstrel gear is toughness, vitality, healing and concentration together with a monk rune as a tempest at the moment. It is the strongest. Plus you are going for your weapon for a transference and for an energy sigil. Energy for more dodges, transference for more heal. So it's you are basically a full tank in this term. So then we are going to our skills after, before we are going to the rotation. So we are starting with F1. Your F1 is your damage thing. You have a damage there, but it's not really needed. So you can switch into it to get some might and get, give some might. It is something you can use. I would never recommend to to use it. You can use your retreat, for example, when you are in a bad spot, but never waste time on meteor showering. You can do that, for example, when you are on a AC cleaning or something, you can do that, but normally you should not waste time here, since you should be switching your attunements all the time to get the passives. Then we have our F2. F2 is our main heal, so every time we are attacking someone, we are also healing. We have our Ice Spike. We have our Geyser, where we read about that this Geyser is also reviving people now, since we buffed it. We have our Frozen Ground as a CC on, on it, and we have our re Healing Rain healing rain, look where the fight will happen, position it really well, save the life of your buddies in your squad, very very important. A cane, static field, unblockable stun, pretty important for your party, plus you can give out swiftness permanent with your wild wildborn speed, so every time your squad is moving, it's pretty good if you're moving with the arcane and you stay on arcane, you give swiftness out, plus you have a knockback, plus you can give a static field out that stops the enemies from pushing in this turn. Really really good, use it. Then we go for our F4, our F4 is Earth. Earth can be used in several ways, you can cripple and bleed people, you have no damage, but cripple is very annoying, trust me. Then you have the magetic aura. Magetic aura, okay, you can reflect the projectiles coming into you. Can you can use it? It's not recommended. We have a line that enemies cannot go through. It's like a guardian line, so you can stop the enemies from pushing through when they don't have stability. And you have a shock wave that gives immobilize out on enemies. So you have a lot of CC there too, with crippling, with not walking through, and with immobilizing. So you can be very annoying and you're not only a pure healer in this term, you're also someone that has utility support in terms of CC. If you're looking now, since we are... Stop attacking my character, please. Uh, if you look at the tom at our toms now, at our attunes, going for fire gives you might, going for water gives you reach, and going for air gives you swiftness, going for four gives you protection and initial stability so basically it is the best on your own if you're deciding to go in the beginning of a fight to go for your f4 to give your party the stability plus the protection on the initial thing very very good to go for that at the beginning and then you have a cooldown on it as you have seen right so you go to your f4 then you click this f4 you're giving out stability and you're giving out protection so your zerg can push pretty easily on this turn and at the same time as you're doing that you can stop enemies from pushing with your line plus you can pop drop your arcane blast to immobilize enemies in this area as you have seen maybe let's do it again immobilize so for example, there's a shade bomb now, and you're bombing your immobilize on a shade bomb when everyone is stripped already. Be careful that the enemies have no Aegis. Aegis is stopping it. So, and never use both blows of it at the same time. Then you can go sw switch to your F3. If you're going to your F3, you have a static, so stop the enemies from pushing with your static in front. Go for some knockback with that. You can double activate it again, and you're going again for some protection. So always activate this kind of things, you always go for some protection for your people, protection 33% in D 
decrease the damage, help the guardians with the protection uptime. Everyone in the squad will love you about it. Then you go for F. You can go for F2. You will be the most of your time in F2. So keep using the F2 with your healing, with your geyser, and everything about that. It's very important. And again, you can overload it to go for another one for e for region, for protection, healing, and vigor for your pub for your buddies. So always keep switching about it. You can go from from tune to tune, like you see. You can go from the tunes to the tunes. Never waste too much time in one when you don't need it. I recommend start with your Earth uh, while fighting, Water in combat, and F3 while moving. I recommend that you can decide it on your own. And being in fire is something you can do it, but it's time waste for me to go into fire. You can use it when there is like a gap filler or something or you need to escape and you have this burning retreat very usable in this turn then we have our shouts we have our heal our heal missile miss below from you healing allies in range and cleansing conditions on the final pulse you're having a pulsing heal that is at the end healing every everyone it's called wash the pain away people will know that and or listen to that and you will get might you get three times heal and you will condition clean on 10 targets then we have Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is a break stun and it is a super speed. Okay, it is a super speed, but be careful with it. So, um, it is a skill very good if the commander calls for super speed on this turn, but it is also a break stun for yourself. So, care about when you're using it because you will be in need for the break stun. So, always use it reactively, please. Never just go for it on an engage. Then, let's go for it here. Eye of the Storm, super speed for our people, 40 seconds cooldown. Then we have Flash Freeze. Flash Freeze is one of my favorite skills as a commander. We have unleashed a torrent of the ice on enemy locations, chilling those who cannot escape current frost order to all allies in range. So we are giving, we having all of them. We having a, uh, this, we having the frost order now. Frost order is giving us minus 10% increased damage. So we getting no damage anymore, basically for 10% less. Really, really good on everyone. On top of that, so you can keep going with it. We can so use the skill. Then on an engage for example, never use it when we are regrouping or waiting for something. Furthermore we have the arcane wave like I told you already, arcane wave is something uh, you can go when the to immobilize the enemies, it is all depending on your attune. On F1 you will burn, on F2 you, <coughs> on you will chill, on F3 you will blind, on F4 you will immobilize. So you wanna go to earth, then for example we are pushing. We are pushing with earth now, the enemies are pushing, we are stopping them with pushing, we are overloading our earth, and then we are going and then we are going for an immobilize on them. So we are crippling, immobilizing and bleeding them. We don't have damage at the end, that's for sure, but even when we don't have damage guys, you can go for CC and all these condies will be annoying, so the guardians have to clean them and if they have to clean this little condies, uh, there will be bigger condies from scourges or some other classes that will be not cleansed and deal a lot of damage at the end, so you can use that. Then we are for example pushing and we are pushing forward, we are swift testing our people, giving us static and we can go for our healing rain while pushing, blasting our healing rain with our with our second skill and going also for a geyser for people while we are freezing the enemies on the same location. So we can go for some very big water AOEs to help our people and before we go out of the water we are going for protection again to help the people with a region and everything about that out before we're going back into earth for example and going again for some protection and some immobilizing shit then we have rebound rebound is a skill it's all depending in which tune you are and then it will give you an aura if a fire frost shock or magnetic and you have to know about what aura you are in and how you want to use it so this is a skill i cannot ex explain you too much you just have to see the situation and anticipate to it but since you're a healer and support think about if you want to go into damage or something about that in my opinion frost aura is one of the best to go to in this turn so then let's go for about the gameplay what you or what I already said is you're going full minstrel means you're going for to a full tank mode. Full tank mode in this mode means as a tempest you are not standing one kilometer behind the tag. You are not standing 900 range to the side. You are not standing with the range caster. Your job is being in the melee train, supporting the melee train with all your CC, with your boon giving, and with your healing and with your blasting. As you have a lot of access to different kind of blasts with with your skills. Let's just go through some really quick. For example, you can blast with your ice spike here, and you can blast 
uh, you can blast two waters already in tier 2 with it. So let's just go for example for a big water and we go for a small water and then we're blasting on, on our both waters and we are applying more regeneration with it. So the regeneration is going up and up and up and up and up with it just as a simple thing. So look at your skills. For example, let's go to the other one. Here you don't have any blasts as you see but you have a combo field lightning force so you can go for example have a combo field lightning under you then you go for your second skill and you blast with the with the water too and then you go for an for an area might here in this turn but that's not really needed anymore in the game right <laughs> then we have our norm we have here yes you see also eruption as a combo finisher so basically earth 2 is also a combo finisher for you means in this turn when you when you see we are pushing we are dropping our water oh no we have to go back into uh, into another tune in a second so we are keeping our healing up then we know okay shit we have to go back in another tune now then we just go back into another tune and we can blast even with the with the eruption 2 on our stuff so you have a lot of different ways to blast so you're also very 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 usable for a commander when it comes into stealth blasting because when you're outfight you can switch the tunes a bit more be sure that you're just using that tunes that you don't need at the beginning of a fight in that skill because every skill that is CCing and every skill that is helping the commander to push and helping with boons and everything about that out will be needed when you're pushing so s look how many times you really need to be blasting since the maximum blast is 15 seconds and when you're reaching that that you're not over blasting for your commander on this turn what I recommend is you're going for you're starting with F4 and you're switching between F4 and F2 in fights and you gap filling it with F3 or F1. But I really recommend you guys to stay most of the time on your earth or your or your water and going to arcane when you guys have nothing else left on that turn. So damage wise it's not really good as you see 300, 300, 300. Feels really really good. I got a lot of information from my Tempest that goes way deeper into, t into the thematic and I will upload a video about advanced stuff for the Tempest later on when my channel will be a bit bigger and the support will be a bit bigger on my channel. But for now this will be this was my guide to Tempest for you guys and I hope that you guys like the video that I get you some information about the build, the trade, how to use it and how you should position yourself in a zerg. I hope that you're following this YouTube channel, that you're following my Twitch and coming on the Discord. Maybe come to the stream and give me some feedback about it. It is a really basic guide for beginners, so if you search for advanced stuff, you have to wait for another few weeks. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you on stream. Bye bye.